Welcome back again. Uh, in this video I'll be showing you how to make the 9-pin D-SAP connector connections for the PAX EDM generator. Uh, this is basically the connector that uh, provides the RS485 connection uh, to the computer and also the feed rate signals uh, the differential analog signals so very easy and uh, I already took the couple of pages from the manual went through all these connection what, what every wire will do and basically wrote them down on this diagram all the signals are now so I don't have to figure out while I'm soldering of what number each line goes into and what, what does it do I do however have to figure out still the color coding of what color wire is what but that is something that I'll just figure out on the go and mark it on the paper so later on I don't have to disassemble the connector to know what wire goes to what point. So I purchased all the connectors from uh, Mike and uh, it comes with a, the connector itself just a normal solderable uh, 9 pin D sub connector and then he also supplies these metal housings for it. It comes with a strain relief for all sorts of cable sizes. So one of these should fit this 8 pin cable or 8 core cable. Uh, it's very important to use a shielded cable because these are data lines and the EDM currents, it, it, well basically the generator is like a very large power uh, radio transmitter so if you have unshielded cables it will pick up the interference from the radio waves and mess up your data lines and it doesn't spell good. Also uh, in previous videos I've been talking about having the right tools for the right job and I mentioned these, yeah, these are nice when you have uh, individual little cables or not so little even, because this is designed for larger cable sizes. Uh, this should work, but it's a bit clunky, so I went and bought this little handy tool. It's made for stripping wires. Uh, that have a diameter of 0.3 to 1 millimeter. It even has little steps to select the wire size. Uh, it also shows the American wire gauge readings. And uh, yeah, it's a very simple handy tool. Sure, it costs some money, but I generally need this. And very simple to use. You just select the wire size you want and the length of the end you want and push your wire in and just push the button to the bottom and pull off the wire so it strips the end. It also can cut up to 0.8 millimeter wires there's little clippers and uh, yeah, should work fine Interesting side note, uh, this is made in Germany by uh, a company called Jokari. I don't know how, how you spell that in German, but in Finnish it spells as Jokari. And it resembles a lot the word Jakari, which is a, a spoken language for this, which is actually a Jakuavain wrench, adjustable wrench. And 
just as Jakari fits all sorts of nuts to strip them, Jokari fits all sorts of wires to strip them intentionally. So, <laughs> just something funny I was laughing when I was in the store. Just take one and a half meters. There's always a last thought just before clipping the wire. You're halfway through and you start thinking, is this enough? And then you're like, ah, well, <laughs> it already went. So, anyway, so you can see the end. Eight core cable, 0.22 square millimeters divided by pi. And the square root of that times two. So it's 0.53 millimeters in diameter, so 0.5. The box knife from my earlier video. I'm gonna try and use that to strip the cable. Now, I don't want to strip too much, so I, I'll confirm with the connector in place in the housing. Let's see what do I need. Ah, okay. So that's how it fits. It's flush with the end. I think we can strip like 25 millimeters off from there. And now I'm gonna try to see if this actually works for stripping a cable. Basically, you just need to go around. You don't have to push, you just kind of, when you have a good tool, let the do, tool do the work for you. So there's no need to force anything. Oh, and this, uh, from earlier I learned this trick. Just use a little screwdriver like a comb. In the middle of the wire, there's this one. It's just rubber. So we don't need that. It's just the core that the other wires go around. I want to be sure which way I put this connector in here. Like, do I put it like this or this? this in the machine. So I, I want this connector pointing away with the cable on the machine the wider way up. So this wider section, because it's a D-shape, is on the top side of the machine. Let's make a little dot here. That end goes on this. Oh, and also I noticed that the screws that are used to put these two pieces together, the housing, the holes are, are not threaded, so I'm assuming this is. Uh, I guess the zinc or aluminum, most probably is zinc because it's cheaper to make. So these screws will, yeah, they are self tapping screws. If you look really closely, I'm not sure if the camera can focus on that. The end of the screw is a little trilobular shape, like, like a triangle which is with the rounded corners and that, that sort of, a squashed circle. Everybody who know, uh, uh, has put a too thin stuff in a lathe three to a jug knows what I'm talking about when they crush it. Uh, so this is a very important case of 
having the right tool to turn these because these look to be positive. It's a, not a number zero, it's not fitting correctly. This was number one. Number one is the correct. Okay, so, so that's good. Now, back to the issue at hand. So about the wire colors, we have a black, brown, purple, white, yellow, green, blue, and red. Um, I think I'll clip off the yellow and purple. Leaving me six wires. So. I'll use the green for the feed rate ground. Uh, red for the feed rate differential positive voltage and the blue one for the negative feed rate differential voltage so that's the feed rate and then the black one for the RS485 ground the brown one for the positive and the white one for the negative data lines mark them here on the paper so I don't mess it up up and I don't have to figure it out later. So there's that. The little wire stripper is not going to be handy. Let's see how this works. Take the thing open. We have a half a millimeter selected, seven millimeter length roughly. Let's see, put the wire in, push that on. Oh. oh, look at it, perfect. And just to confirm, exactly seven millimeters. <laughs> 30 euros, well worth it. So now just put all the wires. Right tool for the job, makes the job go easier and faster, and it's more reliable. There's no second guessing. Numbers we have, so that's one to one. One in dead air, five there, six there. Yeah. Okay, so it's a. Basically, this picture is from the soldering side of the connector. I could have bought also that soldering aid, like the third hand or whatever it's called. I always want to make sure that the solder cup in the connector kind of sucks it in completely, so there's no voids. That may that that makes sure that it wicks in perfectly and surrounds the whole wire. So it's a solid connection. I also want to pre-thin the actual connector housing. It's so pretty, but okay, works. Connector here. Oops. 
Actually, I'm going to change the Inserts. The cable is just that too large for the second small, so I take the second biggest one now. And this goes very easily in, so it's, it really is a self-tapping or thread-forming screw. It takes no effort when you have the right tool. You have to push it a little in first, so it starts threading. And then it just goes by itself. No need to push. It looks perfect. So that's one data cable done. Uh, I have to remember at the other end the shielding should not be connected to anything. It's only connected at the end of the, uh, the, the generator so that there's no ground loops. I'm kind of keeping the generator as the ground point. Because that's, that's kind of the main power supply slash interference source. So next up we'll be doing the bit larger connector, the 15 pin these up, uh, which will house all the external inputs and outputs. So until next time, bye.